Why did you choose to join the Marines? Um, I chose to join the Marines. I was actually, uh, it was the summer after my freshman year of college. Um, I had, uh, my father had been in the Marines, I had uncles in the Marines, um, and it was always something I wanted to do. Um, so after my freshman year of college, I decided to, uh, it was either then or never. So uh, my, uh, <clears throat> two days after my 19th birthday, I walked down to the printer's office and uh, signed the paperwork to join the, uh, join the Marines. What was the training like? Uh, Marine Corps boot camp's 13 weeks. Um, it's basically uh, a program that completely breaks you down and, and reteaches you everything you do, uh, from how to tie your shoes to how to stand to how to talk to how to brush your teeth. Um, basically, what they're trying to do is strip you down to you know nothing almost, and then build you back up into what they what they want you to be. Now, does that carry over since you've been in the Marines? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, uh, you know, they always say it's a decision that affected my life completely, uh, and I wouldn't be where I am today without without the Marine Corps. And I find that if you find talk to a lot of Marines, like my father, he was a high school dropout, joined the Marine Corps at 17, um, and then he became a business owner and you know uh, was able to make make something out of himself. Um, so to me, the Marine Corps definitely helped shape a lot about who I am today, how I act, you know, how I carry myself. Uh, especially my work ethic, uh, definitely. <clears throat> when you first got to Iraq, what was your first day or experience like? So, more so when we got to Kuwait, uh, was the first day before we were about to ship uh, into Iraq uh, through a convoy. Uh, I was there for the invasion. Uh, as soon as we got there, <clears throat> uh, interestingly enough, there were uh, scuds that were going up in the air and Patriots going up to intercept them. And uh, as soon as we came off our vehicle, people were yelling at us to get in the bunker, but we had no clue where the bunker was. Uh, so it was uh, definitely pretty hectic from the second we touched, touched ground uh, to get there. Uh, almost even a little bit prior to that, prior, prior to us even landing, uh, I remember us being on the plane uh, headed over there and we had to put on our chemical warfare suits in the belly of the plane before we were able to even step off because there was a threat of chemical warfare at the time, uh, so it was pretty intense, definitely. The first 24 hours were, uh, were a real wake-up call as to where you are. Now, was that nerve-wracking? Like, how did you deal with any stress that you encountered? Well, that's what goes back to the training. You know, like, training is, boot camp's one of the highest stresses environments you can be in. Um, it's 13 weeks, but it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's not 13 weeks, an hour a day. It is every single second of every single day you are in boot camp, you are in Paris Island, South Carolina, um, and uh, you know, really, through boot camp, then combat training, and then your, you know, I went to engineer school, so uh, so through all that type of training, they build you up to basically be ready to handle those stresses. So, you know, I always say, it's just like in a sport, when things get tough, you fall back on your training. Well, same thing with the Marine Corps. When things get tough, you fall back and rely on the things that you've been through, that your experiences that you've been through, that you can pull from. Uh, that help you react in a, in a constructive way, you know, uh, and I think that that's, that can be, you know, that can be used across all, all different parts of life, whether it be jobs or sports or the military. Um, what would be an example of a mission or objective that you would have to complete on like a day-to-day -day basis? It actually switches a lot. It's very fluid. Um, you could go, you know, a month without any contact, and then all of a sudden, for three days, it could be, you know, mayhem. You know, and that's the one thing we used to have a sign when we pulled out of our base called uh, it said "Complacency Kills," and the idea behind that is like the day you think that it's going to be a regular day or an easy day is the day when things get crazy. You know, so don't be complacent. You know, don't overlook something. Uh, you know, and you know, s sweat the small things. You know. Uh, you know, stay vigilant all the time because the day you relax could be that day. Um, so it really would be, you know, it's hard to say that one day was was the same as any other day. You know, every situation was different. Um, missions were different. Uh, personnel's different sometimes. Uh, you know, so I got to do a lot of really cool things. Uh, definitely a lot of different things uh, when I was there. Um, now, when you were with the other people that you were fighting with, what was the bond like that you created or shared between them? 
Uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's definitely one of the most uh, intense bonds I would say that you, you have uh, because you live with these people. You know, it's twenty it's twenty four seven. You know, you're sleeping in holes with them. You're uh, out on missions with them. You're sleep deprived with them. You know, you're eating food out of envelopes with them. You know, you're uh, every day. You know, every day is is with them. So you can imagine how how tight that makes you as a group, especially when you're going after one objective and, you know, part of the objective is to stay alive, you know, and you got to rely on these guys to your left or right, you know, and and it's not for a short amount of time, you know, you train with these people before you go over and then you go over and it's almost like you've been practicing and now it's game time. Well, game time lasts, you know, my deployment was seven and a half months, you know, so that's seven and a half months without your, this is your family, you know, so it's way different than anything you could ever duplicate you know anything I've ever been a part of it's way different you know, uh, to be removed completely uh, but I guess part of the thing is that you're all there together and that's what that's what helps bind you uh, in that situation so you said you were there for seven months did you miss home or your family at home or? yeah so I actually did two tours so I was there for the invasion uh, so we were there for around six and a half seven months my second tour I was in a forward operation base near Syria uh, and we were doing actually part of this places that you see on the news now are part of the places that I was in up in the Al Ambar province and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, uh, yeah, you miss it. You know, you, you have contact. You know, my first tour, I don't think I contacted anybody from home for over a month. Uh, my second tour, uh, you know, every once in a while I get a satellite phone to call home or like <clears throat> some small internet access to shoot an email or something like that. But you know, nothing ever crazy, and you know, to be honest, the, you know, letters were probably the most common thing in packages, uh, and that meant the most because it actually like takes a lot of time for somebody to send you a package, and when you get it, it's almost like Christmas every single time. You know, when mail comes in, you know, if you get a, a letter, it's you know, it's the greatest thing. So it's, uh, uh, it makes you really, uh, you know, really cherish that communication that you do have. Now, did you have? Some athletes have like pre-game rituals that they go through before they go out for a game. Now, did you have anything like that before you went out to uh, a mission? Or yeah, did? making sure my weapon was clean and ready to fire. Uh, you know, making sure I had all my gear straight. Uh, we do a lot of pre-staging of gear, so if we know we're going out at four in the morning, you know, I'm not up at three making sure I have my stuff together. I get all my stuff together the night before. You know, make sure I have all my all my straps taped down so nothing's flying around. Make sure that everything's you know everything I need is ready to go and, and tightened up. And you know, most importantly, you know that everyone's briefed on the mission. Everybody knows what's going on. Everyone's informed, uh, and uh, you know we're ready to go. You know, make sure we're. If things happen, we, we all have a plan and we're all on the same page. Now, what lessons from your service did you bring um, home with you or that you live with day to day? Um, you know, there's a lot. I, I would say just, you know, the, the, the normal ones of, 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 of working hard and, and you know, uh, but some of the ones in the Marine Corps that they stress, which I think are different than some of the other services. Not that, you know, it's just, just one of the things that, Honor, courage, and commitment. You know, to be an honorable person. Um, you know, to, to, to try and make the right decisions for others, uh, and not just for yourself. You know, to put put other people first. Um, you know, and, and just you know, to be committed to something. I think nowadays everybody wants everything really quick, and uh, if it takes a long time to, to achieve something, people don't have the. Uh, you know they don't have the stomach for that or they don't see the the long run you know for me you know that's something that i you know i just keep my head down and keep moving forward you know that's, that's all i'm trying to do is you know i have places i want to go i have things i want to do and if i didn't have that type of drive that i was taught in the marine corps uh i don't think i'd be where i am today you know i don't think i, I don't think i'd be okay with putting in the hours i put in i don't think i'd be able to uh you know have this type of work ethic day in and day out and i think that's what what people miss you know people think life's hard sometimes life's easy you know especially you know you know you might have you know something going on in your life but it could always be worse and I don't even mean for us you know for us it was at least one thing but you know you feel bad when you see people in other countries that have nothing and when I say nothing I mean like not even a chair like not electricity no running water you know for us we're there for so many months and you know we try to make it as you know as good as we can for us but you know we get to go home you know those people still have to live there so and i think that would be one thing that it opens your eyes that you know life is uh 
pretty good. And you know, you grow up in a place like this, and you almost hit the jackpot uh, compared to what other people have to do every day. So I think my perspective, and, and to this day, I think that my perspective is a lot different than even my friends that are my own age. You know, I look at things a lot differently than they do. Uh, just because I've seen, you know, some of the worst things, you know, that, that can be. So I always know no matter what, you know, tomorrow's a new day and it could always be better, you know, and it could always be a lot worse. So.